but uh, please welcome one of our own, Deborah Morrell. Hello. Oh, awesome. It's loud. Or am I loud? I'm not sure. Um, so first of all, I just want to say thank you. I do not take it lightly being up here. I am extremely petrified, and I think the Lord, um, beyond knows this, he sent three people to stop me in my tracks to pray for me. And first of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone who did pray for me because I really need it. I'm not dismissing you. I just, when I'm stressed, I like tunnel vision. I was like, need to get this done, you know? Um, and I don't want to do that to you. I don't want to rush this because I want to get this over with, right? Um, I actually want us all to be blessed because the Lord spoke this to me first. And it's just the way it's supposed to be, right? You receive the message. And I know as I'm going through it, the Lord's going to continue speaking to me because it's a reality. Before we start, I'd like to start with the um, moment of prayer only because um, my thoughts aren't all together right now. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm like sort of stalling, but in my brain, I want to pray. I, want to, I need the peace, right? So, um, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity. Lord, we just surrender me, for, first of all. I surrender myself to you, Lord. I need you this morning. I need help, Father God. Um, and I pray for each and every person who came out here. God, to come here together, to put our differences aside, and to come here on a one united theme, which is you, Christ which is you, Lord. Lord, that is an, a miracle in, in and of itself, Father. Lord, I'm here because you called me, and your people are here today because you called them. Father, today, in, in the spirit of obedience of all of us being here, we ask that your Holy Spirit moves without any restrictions, Lord. Move the way you're supposed to, God. If you're gonna slay people in spirit, do it, Jesus. God, if you're going to heal, heal, Jesus. And let us be willing, Father God, willing participants in all of this, Lord. Let us allow you to move the way you want to move. Let us, you know, cast aside our boxes of how you're supposed to move, but allow you to move the way you see fit for us, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. In your name we pray. Amen. Whew. Oh, I get a clap. <laughs> I honestly feel better, right? So we're going to talk about friendship. And I want to start with this because in my personal experience, I've had terrible friends. I've had terrible, terrible friends, right? And, um, you know, some of the traumatic situations that took place in my life, such as betrayal, lies, hurt, has been at the hands of friends. People who call myself friends, people I thought were friends. And so today I wanted to talk about reboot friendship. Not so much from the perspective of other people being better friends to you, right? Even with what I've said, it's from the perspective of you being a better friend, okay? Myself being a better friend. Starting with your friendship with God, starting with your friendship with people in your life. So let me, let me just go through, because the topic is reboot friendship, are you a Facebook friend? How many people are familiar with Facebook? Yeah, awesome, right? So I don't hate Facebook. Let's be clear about that, okay? I don't hate Facebook. I have a Facebook that is deactivated, but every now and then I go in and check up and see what's going on, then I deactivate it again uh, because it's, it's what works for me right now in my life. So the problem with Facebook friends, or what we call friend, there's an option to friend people on Facebook is that it's one-sided, usually generated by self-interest. Either like, oh, this person is really cool, love to have them part of my social network. Or, oh, I need to up my friend count, this person is one more body, one more name in that list. Right, Th does that seem fair, guys? No, I'm not saying everybody does this, let's be clear. Some people genuinely like, I want my family, I want my mom, I want my dad as my friends on Facebook. But I'm talking about the general common thought that happens when you see like a celebrity on Facebook, when you see someone that may be from your job, usually but from a general place of self-interest, right? Also, Facebook friendship requires little to no maintenance, right? 
Whereas someone, your friend right now, you will follow up with them. You'll call them, you'll stop over, you'll invite them over, you know, you'll do birthday milestone celebrations with them. On Facebook, how many of those people do you really invite, you know, to a party, right? Or to like a baptism, right? <laughs> so funny. So um, it really requires a little to no maintenance, right? Also, it's fleeting. Someone can be your friend today on Facebook, and then, and then, you know, they piss you off or they say something that didn't sound right or their drama, right? And you unfriend them. How many people have unfriended people? All right. I've unfriended a lot of people. <laughs> so honestly, the point of this is to say that the majority of friends on Facebook or on social network, right, Instagram, so on and so forth, right? I'm focused on Facebook because that's really what a lot of people use now. But the majority of those friendships, they're – they're superficial, right? They're not really um, moving the human connection forward. They're not establishing anything really, right? So I want to come to a place of scripture and talk about friendship. Ecclesiastes, well, I said that wrong. Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9 through 10 and verse 10, uh, verse 12. It says, two, be two people are better than one. When two people work together, they get more work done. If one person falls, the other person can reach out to help. But those who are alone when they fall have no one to help them. An enemy might be able to defeat one person, but two people can stand back to back to defend each other. And three people are even stronger. They're like a rope that has three parts wrapped together. It is very hard to break. Amen? Now, this is a friendship that I want. This is a friendship that I'm fortunate to have. As everyone knows, Crystal is my best friend, right? Not because we're on a worship team together. Actually, through our friendship, we started a band in college. And honestly, she always talks about this, so I'm going to bring it up. I, like, hounded her down in college because she was trying to play me out. Like, she's not my friend, right? So we, we became friends, and then um, from there, a series of things happened. For example, I shared with her, you know, when she had her children, I became godmothers to her children because I hold that place in her life as her friend. So the point here I want to help you guys to reflect is really reflect in your life right now. Are you a good friend to the people in your life right now? And I'm really going to give you a moment to think about that because, see, most people, they're thinking about themselves. I'm a good person. I care about people. I'm sympathetic. I know right from wrong. Right, that's awesome. That's all probably great and probably true. But I'm talking about in the terms and the perspective of someone else. Are you a good friend? See, it seems like when we look at Facebook, we're like, you know, social media created this. This never existed before Facebook and Instagram and all this public stuff. There's no more privacy. But is that the truth? Because People like this existed before Facebook. How many people know people like that, right? They're not deep at all. They don't care about your life. When they come to you, it's usually about them, right? It's how much you can benefit them. It's what they can get out of you. It's how further they can get by you being in their life, correct? If you've never met someone like that, God bless you, <laughs> you know? I have met several people like that, and it's unfortunate because it not only affects their friendship, but affects their relationship as families. It may not be to you. That may not be a situation in your life. Maybe your family is amazing. Maybe it's perfect. Maybe it's great. Maybe there are some areas you can work on. Or maybe it's in a place of disaster, right? And, it, and I'm asking you to step back and look, you know, what is my friendship with God like? Is he... Is he just my friend? Is that it? He's my friend. He does for me. I can call him when I need to get a bailout. Or are you a friend to God? Amen? It's kind of quiet. <laughs> so Facebook uses this um, acronym all the time, BFF, Best Friends Forever, right? This is really from the perspective, what I'm going to break down here is really from place of close friendship. This is what the study is talking about. So University of M Missouri did a study of friendships in the lives of adults. These are the three things that they stated 
happens when an adult has friendships, right? Again, friendship, not a casual friend, because they did specify in the study. Not a casual friend, like somebody you see who's an associate, you don't, much know, you don't really know much about them, not that. Let's talk about a close friend, okay? With a close friend, they found that it boosts physical immune system, right? So in a study conducted on older adults, they noticed that autoimmune was, boost, was boosted. And so if anybody knows about autoimmune disease, one of the symptoms is that, you know, you're fatigued, and there's like a several um, different other symptoms. But I like this because in Scripture, when you think about your friendship with God, one of the things he talks about is as your friend, as your God, he will renew your strength. Amen? So now, this is coming from a place of, obviously, it's a secular study, but I want to correlate it to Scripture as we're talking. That makes sense? Yeah? I like, I'm a nerd. I like facts, right? I love to hear about Scripture. Scripture is very inspirational, and Scripture is my way of life. But it's awesome when you can find scientific studies that backs up what Scripture is saying. Also talks about emotional support um, system stronger possibility of withstanding or sustaining a traumatic life event, okay? Not everyone has gone through this yet, but before you die, well, you will go through one traumatic event. I'm sorry <laughs> to, to make it sound so mar matter of fact, but you will, right? And for those who have gone through maybe one or two or a couple traumatic life events, you'll remember those friends who stood by you, right? If you had the death of a loved one, if you know, you have a devastating marriage, if a situation happened with your children, something bad, whatever the case may be, you remember the friends who were there for you, right? And so in scripture, we look at and we see Jesus Christ, how he talks about he's the comforter, how he comes side by side next to you. He left, when he was leaving, he left the Holy Spirit, right? The paraclete to come um, next to you, to come alongside of you in life, the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? Healthier mental health status, right? So pr pretty much people with close friends in their life, not only do they have a better chance at boosting physical immune system and emotional support system, but a healthier mental health status, meaning you're less prone to anxiety and depression. This is important because, oops, sorry. This is important because when we look at scripture, several scripture talks about Jesus Christ stating to you and I, don't be afraid. Do not be anxious. I am here. Amen? So human development. First of all, there, there's a category in psychology as human development. They look at the different stages of life. They believe that as you go through different stages of life, so from like, I'm breaking this down very, very much so, okay? So like there's the infant stage, there's the toddler stage, there's the preteen stage, there's the beta teenage uh, adolescence um, existed at one point, and then there's the adult stage, and there's the later life stage. You need to successfully go through every stage in order to be a fully functional adult, okay? That's what human development theorists believe, okay? And so part of human development theorists, they state that for children, right, Part of, um, you know, measuring their um, growth and development is looking at their friendships, their capability and ability to have friends. Isn't that interesting? Right? And then you look at, and it makes sense, because you look at certain adults who call themselves loners or so on and so forth, right? They also have a problem connecting with other people. Okay? Now, scripture, biblically, we're going to get into that, friendship is held with high regard, okay? So part of the three things, this is just part of it, the three things that they state that are good for children when they, you know, are able to maintain and, and you know, fully have friends and, and, and the ability of having friends is that they develop an identity, self-esteem, and altruism, the belief in or practice of disinterested, selfless concern for the well-being of others, as per Google, okay? Okay, so this is why this is important. I, I landed on the children development part because Jesus calls us children of God, okay? Let's be clear who he calls. 
to all who receive him and believe in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. Amen? Okay, so if you're a children of God, and let's back up just real quickly, and this is where I'm going to make the correlation, right? Children of God, this is talk about children with friendship in their life. Isn't it awesome that Jesus, as children of God, right, he also understands that we can practice these things in our life, in our walk. Because as children of God, to develop our identity with friends, correct, right, our friendship with God and our friends with others, our identity is built, okay? It states here, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear, um, sorry, sorry, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. So your identity is that you bear these good fruits that resemble Jesus Christ. Are we all on the same page? Yes, right? And so your identity is created. You can tell who is serving the Lord by the fruits of the Spirit, correct? Amen? And so when we look at stuff with people with malice, envy, jealousy, you know, um, greediness, those people rarely have friends, correct? Or if they have friends, it's very dysfunctional. Correct? Self-esteem. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So the Lord gives us confidence to come to him. Hello? Confidence to approach the Father. Confidence to, imagine, I don't go up to friends and ask them, can I borrow money? I mean, sorry, did I say friends? I meant to say strangers. I don't go up to strangers and ask them, can I borrow money? I don't go up to strangers and say, hey, can I crash at your house for a little bit? Can I borrow your car, right? You only do that, those type of things with friends. You can ask a favor of a friend, correct? It also goes on in Song of Solomon, says, oh my love, you are altogether Together, beautiful and fair. There is no flaw nor blemish in you. Now, wouldn't this make you feel good? To know that someone says, because I know I have flaws. I most definitely have flaws, right? But to know that someone, despite my flaws, when they see me, they don't see someone flaw-filled. They see someone that is beautiful and fair and perfect. Isn't that what you want? Isn't that what you want? Hello? Think about if you're dating someone, they're like, ah, you could probably do something about your hair, right? <laughs> or, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, every day, it's a different criticism, right? Right? Doesn't that make sense? Like, think about it. If, if, if they had a laundry list of everything you can do better, maybe if you cooked, I'd probably stay home. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's that's not a friendship. You understand? So, to think that your God, your Savior, your friend, they see you despite how many times you flaked, you don't care for things that mean anything to him. Despite that, despite your inconsistencies and your inability to be faithful. I'm not talking about anybody specific here. I'm talking about me when I'm thinking about when I'm saying this stuff, right? Because I struggle. I struggle to pray. I struggle to read my Bible consistently. Um, and I know probably some people are like, how are you qualified to be on stage? But I'm here because God gave, has given me multiple chances. Now, just because I mess up doesn't mean, oh, yeah, I get a clap. <laughs> just because I mess up doesn't mean I stay there. And this good friend, Jesus Christ, he's there to pick you up. I can, I've lost count. I was about to say I can count. I've lost count of how many times I've fallen and messed up. And completely destroyed what I thought on my end I destroyed my destroyed my relationship with God and God has always faithfully been there always faithfully said you know what you could do it come on get back up I help you we're going this way when I completely go the opposite way can anybody attest to that does anybody want that because see the whole purpose of this today is for you to really think about it's good to want this. 
it's very good to desire this because God created us with a lacking in our spirit so that we can connect with Jesus Christ, that we would always want him, always desire to be in his presence. And that's awesome. That's a start. But on the flip side, what kind of friend are you to him? That's the question. How many times do you tell him you love him just because? Tell him you're an awesome friend just because. These are real things to think about and consider and to really reflect on and to try to change. Altruism. This is what scripture has to say. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. Does this sound familiar to anybody? Because this one good friend, Jesus Christ, died, gave his life up. Okay, it wasn't stolen from him. He gave his life up for you and I, children of God, for his friends. You ever seen the movies where, like, you know, somebody's about to get shot or, like, they're about to get hurt, some sort of harm, and then the friend just, like, jumps in the way, like, no. <laughs> right? You know, we laugh, but Jesus really did that, for real. I love action movies. That's why I refer to that. <laughs> but seriously, you know, when we think about Jesus Christ and how much he sacrificed to, for us, and we go back to the um, secular definition where it says that what children learn through friendship is the belief or practice of disinterested or selfless concern for the well-being of others. And then we fast forward and we look. Jesus did this for us already, the biggest sacrifice. Okay? Now, this don't mean anything to you. If you feel like sin doesn't exist, right, life is whatever we make it, you know, I'm here today, gone tomorrow, um, you know, all this supernatural stuff doesn't really apply to me. Then this means nothing to you, right? And this will explain why a gift has been given to you and you don't appreciate it. Nothing gets on my nerves <laughs> than spending my money on a gift, giving it to someone, they're like, oh, thank you, right? I'm just like, I could have bought McDonald's. <laughs> you know, like seriously, if that's why you don't appreciate it. To those who don't appreciate it. Now listen, it might sound harsh. It might sound like I'm coming for you and saying that, oh, you don't appreciate the Lord, you know. And that is what I'm saying. But I want you to see it from a different perspective. Someone gave their life for you. Jesus Christ is a person, physical, tangible being that came on earth and died for you and I. Knowing that there was no possible chance of you doing this by yourself. You could never conquer death. You could never conquer sin. You would never be able to do it. I would never be able to do it, no matter how strong you think you are. You would never be able to do it. So Jesus said, you know what? They're not strong enough to do it. And you know what? They did start this. This is a result of sin, sin that humans caused. But I love them so much that I'm not going to count this against them. I love them so much that I'm not going to, I'm not even going to notice that. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to give them a way out. I'm going to save them. This is a real friend, guys. This isn't a fake friend. This isn't a, a friend that's like looking to stir up your life and then just leave. Give you bad advice and then just leave. Envy what you have or how far you've made it. Sabotage your life and then leave. Or spread rumors and gossip about you and then leave. This is not that type of friend. This is a real friend. Once again, he died for you and I. See, for me, my life is so precious, right? It's so precious. There are certain things I do to make sure I'm still alive, right? You too, right? Some people exercise. Some people diet. Some people make sure they enjoy the best of their life, right? Because they understand that stress and stuff, these take away from your life, right? 
There's certain things you do to make sure you're still alive, although life is not guaranteed to anyone. But, you, you know, you, you, everything within your control, you want to make sure you do it so that you're still alive. Now, think about if I told you, listen, this person on the other side of the world did this, did that. It's all their fault. They don't really care about you. But I think it'd be a good idea if you gave up your life for them. It would really save them a death penalty. It'd be like, what? <laughs> Psych, I'm not doing that, <laughs> you know? It would really, right? If you really think about it, I'm, it's just, it's inconceivable. You, you can't comprehend that. Why someone who knows this person, first of all, you ever seen people who come to you with the same problem six million times? And you say, listen, just do X. They decide to do everything but what you said. Then they come back like, oh my God, he left me. And I'm like, I told you, <laughs> right? Imagine that you are that person. You are that person. You literally are. You are that person. You mess up every day. Before he died for, me, for you, humans were destroying the ecosystem, one another, earth, everything. He died. And they're still doing it, right? There are a couple people, that, not a couple people, we have a good church going that people are, are really coming to him, seeking him from generation to generation. We have people who really truly and understand this friendship with God and who are coming to him. But think about it. Wars, famine, human trafficking, right? Evil, just evil, pure evil going on. We create and find different ways to self-destruct every day as a group of people. And yet, after he died for you, he continued to provide and protect you. He continued to watch over you. He continues to love you. Every morning, he breathes his, his breath into you to give you life. As you're walking, as you are walking, as you are meeting different people, do you know how many freak accidents happen when people walking down the sidewalk? Matter of fact, <laughs> I love going to the city, but still, you always hear in the city, like some freak accident, like something from the sky fell, and like, you know, some random car drove into a group of people. It actually happened, right? Recently, but that always happens. Or like some shooting, and this and the third. And think about in areas where it's not so populated, and you hear these crazy accidents. You hear about people who sleep and don't wake up. And you think about this friend who does this for you watch over you, protects you. Can we, can we praise him for that? Thank him for that? This is what Jesus said. John 15, verse 5, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I made known to you. Amen? John 15, 12 to 13. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. And I stop here because... He's really going out of his way here to call you his friends. Amen? So this is not me making this up. This is what scripture says. You are his friends. He calls you his friends. He makes known to you. Because see, when someone's not your friend, they ask you personal stuff. It's weird. To me, it makes me rude. Because I will fly out tell you, I'm not telling you that. You know? It's just, it's weird. Somebody doesn't know you, and they're like, hey. How's your children? And you're like, how do I know you? Where do I know you from? Right? But when it's a friend, it's like, you know this person cares. You're not suspicious of, you know, whatever the intention is. Or at least you shouldn't, if they're your friends. And so I'd like to place the emphasis on verse 12. His commandment is that you love one another just as he loved you. And I really want to focus here. I really, really want to focus here. Love is sacrifice. Love is truly sacrifice. 
And it requires you to put someone else before yourself. If you cannot do that, first admit it. I can't do this. For a very long time, I couldn't do it. I really couldn't. I really, really couldn't do it. And I was skeptical of everybody. I was very cynical of everyone. And I'm like, oh, they just want this. Oh, I know what's up. I, I'm not even messing with this person. But Jesus, after admitting this and saying, God, I need help in this area because of my hurts, because of the way things have hurt me, because of bad experiences that I've had, I need help to love other people like you love me. Because honestly speaking, everyone has a threshold. Like I'll do up to this far, right? Even with friends. And you say, you know, they did this for me, so I'll do that for them. Most people do that. You may not do that. Most people do that. But what friendship is requiring here is that you go a step further. That you put someone else before yourself. And you may need help in this area. And if you do, as I did, admit it. Pray. Now, if you pray, practice. Practice being a better friend. It is never too late. My life statement is as long as I'm breathing, I can always correct a situation. Amen. I can always try to do better. I don't do this because of my strength. Strictly because of Jesus Christ's strength. So for those of you who may find yourselves called um, a loner, or you tend to find yourself away from people, or that you say that, you know, say statements like, you know, I'm good, I don't need friends, I don't like people, usually generates from a place of hurt or a place of rejection. Sometimes people who are socially awkward, and when I say this not in an offensive way, but, you know, they don't really process well how humans connect with one another, right? They seem to be missing. Like if, if there's a rhythm, they're always on the offbeat. Okay. They just realize, you know, I'm better on my own. I don't need people. Now, in those areas, I'd like to offer you encouragement. This is what Jesus says. This is what the Bible says. In all of these situations, his grace is sufficient for you. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Psalm 34 verse 17 says, The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. This is what he does for you. And again, for people who feel that they have a hard time connecting with other people, these verses are meant to encourage you that he will be there for you. And as he is there for you, take a chapter out of his book and be there for someone else. It will not always be easy because people can be ungrateful and people can be unloyal and people can just be grimy, period, right? But as a friend, as a friend, you can be a better friend to someone else. You can be a better friend to someone else. And whether you struggle with connecting with others, whether you struggle you know, um, with different type of mental health issues that makes it easier for you to retract from others, like anxiety, depression, these things make you want to further seclude yourself from others, right? That you don't want to be with others. You don't want to be bothered. You don't care for others. These verses are meant to encourage you. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. He will never forsake you. Don't be afraid. Amen? 
So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Please stand. The title is Reboot Friendship. Subtitle, are you a Facebook friend? And by that, I mean, do you have a false sense of connection with other people? Do you have a false sense of connection with God? And it may be hard for you to say yes if this is true. You may be tempted to justify it. So I'm going to ask you now to close your eyes. And I'm going to ask you to really ask yourself, have this conversation with God. Do I have a false sense of connection with you? Do I think we're friends, but we're not really friends? I barely talk to you. I barely consult with you. I barely spend time with you. I don't even really know you. When it comes to ask you for help, I'm afraid, because I don't really know how you're going to respond, because I don't know you. I'm going to ask you to also think about what is your life like? See, if human theorists, human development theorists can say you become a better functionally, um, functioning child and adult as a result of friends, what kind of friends do you have? What kind of friends are you? What friend are you to those friends? What kind of company do you keep? Does disaster seem to follow you all? Is it drama? Finally, I'm going to ask you to think about your relationship with God. You see, he loves you. And he doesn't need you to love him back for him to love you. He loves you, regardless and despite yourself. Whether you have good days or bad days, he loves you. And whether you only come to him when you need help, he loves you. So I'm going to ask you to take this chance and connect with this friend connect with this person who saw you centuries ago before you were born and saw that you had potential saw that you were beautiful without flaw and that you're perfect worth dying for if you need to have a conversation with him I'm going to ask you to come to the front if you need to connect with him please come to the front. He's here waiting for you. And he needs you. And you need him. Please take this time to talk to him.